So next we'll hear from Luisa Oliveira on enabling and protecting urban agriculture. Hi, uh, my name is Luisa Oliveira. I work in, uh, for the city of Somerville in the Mayor's Office of Strategic Planning, Office of Strategic Planning and Community Development. I forgot what the acronym stood for. Um, Somerville is the first city in New England to have passed an urban agriculture ordinance. I don't know how many of you know about planning or municipal ordinances, zoning ordinances, but uh, in terms of urban agriculture, most municipalities either ignore it uh, and they have very antiquated, you can have a family cow from the 1800s, they have laws that apply to another time, or they prohibit it outright. Um, most of the time they ignore it and something will come up and the town or city may decide because we had this bad experience, we're not gonna allow this or that. Uh, in Somerville, we have a little bit of a, of a different story and I, I think I'm invited to this conference to, to tell that story because I'm not an academic. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start the story with, the ordinance was passed in 2012. Can you hear me? This sounds, okay, because it sounds really funny here. Um, this is an article that was published in Boston Magazine in 2013, and it was about how Boston can annex all of the different communities around it. And they decided that they would uh, take Somerville by no ammunition necessary, will simply direct inspectional services to quarantine all shipments of organic produce on suspicion of potato blight or boll weevil infestation and see how long the locavores last when their forces subsist on train records. The, the mayor uh, countered that we would fight with an army of street festivals and local brewers. So the reason that I put this up here is, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with Somerville or Somerville 10 or 15 years ago, but we now have this, um, for better or for worse, kind of food culture slash local food culture around Somerville. And we could have a discussion about if that's a good or bad thing. But the point being that uh, urban agriculture, local food has become an economic, uh, um, a develop, an economic development tool. So people are coming to Somerville to eat local things, to uh, eat at restaurants with locally sourced food. Uh, urban agriculture in Somerville is not new, as it is not in other cities. Um, I don't know the statistics, but uh, certainly people grew a lot of their food in their backyards, uh, especially pre-World War II, and people continue to grow food in Somerville and do today. These are some uh, folks, this, the first one is a, um, a bill encouraging people during the war to keep chickens in their backyard. And then uh, the 1800, the family cow, people actually had a family cow that they used for uh, milk and cheese. And then um, the Victory Gardens in San Francisco. And then this is a picture of the one of the Secretary at Works uh, parents-in-law who came from Portugal in the 1960s and settled in Somerville and continue to grow food in their backyard. If any of you have seen any of the grape arbors in Somerville that are kind of uh, dwindling, you know that uh, urban agriculture was very much practiced and uh, is still. And there are a lot of environmental reasons why urban agriculture is a great thing and you know them all, uh, but the biggest uh, thing in my mind is that the UN projects that cities are growing rapidly and that a large percentage of our population will be moving into cities. So certainly even if at this point we're not making a huge difference in terms of the environmental benefits because we're not growing enormous amounts of food in the cities, we need to start thinking about where our population is going and how we're going to feed ourselves and alternatives to what we have today. So in Somerville, the urban agriculture ordinance really came from three places. One is that there were already folks practicing urban agriculture and trading tomatoes over the fence. Two, um, as I said, there's this kind of foodie, hipster, local food, ground swelling that's happening a lot, not just in Somerville, but in, in many, many places. And the third is that the mayor, uh, Joseph Curtitoni, who is a first generation, or he was born here, but his parents came from Italy, and grew up with uh, parents who were growing things in the backyard as well. 
uh, had started the Shape Up Somerville program. I don't know how many of you have heard of Shape Up Somerville, but it is one of the first anti-obesity programs in the country. And when Michelle Obama was researching the Let's Move program, that was one of the precedent programs that they looked at. And the mayor went on a tour with the US Council of Mayors in which they went to uh, many different urban agriculture farms, including um, Will Allen in Milwaukee. And when he came back, he said, we can do this in Somerville, and what do we need to do? Oh gosh, I'm, I only have five minutes, I better talk fast. So, so it came from a lot of different directions. We drafted uh, uh, an ordinance, and there has been a lot of controversy in, about urban agriculture in many different cities. These are some of the newspaper reports that you could just Google image and find. Uh, I re recently read that someone was being taken to court for having chickens or being put in jail or some preposterous thing like that. But there, it really is very contentious and you don't have to look very far because we've had a lot of contentious kind of things happen here in Cambridge. Um, and, and there were some legitimate things. This is kind of a joke slide. Nobody actually protested like that. But <laughs> there were real concerns and mainly they had to do with uh, having chickens. Many people think that's really disgusting. Um, urban soils, which are a legitimate problem. Uh, rats and the perception that gardens, chickens, bees, all of those things can bring more rats into the urban environment. And then um, the things that go along with it, like compost, composters can bring rats. Uh, and the idea that uh, bees are horrible because if you get bit, you could die, or just bees are horrible because we hate, a lot of people really hate bees because they don't really understand why they're here. Uh, in any case, the ordinance that we came up with tried to, in the densest city in New England, uh, try to promote and encourage urban agriculture while at the same time minimizing conflicts between neighbors because we are really densely packed together. So it's organized in terms of scale and it looks at the backyard. So it has things like you can now sell your produce provided you're, you're um, uh, giving a soil test at the point of sale. You can sell your, your produce. Um, then we looked at things like community gardens, which the sale of produce is not allowed at, and that's really has to do with the zoning ordinances having to do with garden stands and farm stands and the signs and traffic patterns, et cetera, et cetera. And then we looked at a community farm or what that could look like. Now, the reality is that in Somerville, it's unlikely that someone's going to buy two lots of land and make a big farm because the real estate is so, the land value is so, high that it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. And we can talk a little bit more about the things that are happening. Um, we limited the beehives to two per property. You have to have, you have to live in the property or have permission and have permission from your landlord. The chickens are six or less, absolutely no roosters. Um, and that if you've ever gone somewhere where there's a rooster next door, you know why that is. Um, and then there's a number of, of things in the ordinance that we try to, to put in there to really prevent these conflicts. And, oh, I only have two minutes. I might go over, I'm just warning you now. Um, so if any of you have ever read a planning document or are urban planners, it's, they're pretty hard to understand, to say the least. Um, I have a master's degree in landscape architecture and I was like, really, this is, nobody's gonna understand what the rules are. And they weren't just that there's, it's a zoning ordinance, but we also have a board of health rules and then there are state rules. So there are three sets of rules. So we came up with this very easy guide called the ABCs of Urban Agriculture. And I have a copy here. And it essentially, and it's cute because it's A, agriculture, Bs, chickens. Yes, I know, it's very cute. So, um, but we also tried to make it very understandable and we tried to break it down into these sections that highlight a couple of things. The first, for example, with beekeeping, uh, here's an example. We ask people, did you know? Because many people have a perception about um, urban agriculture that is very far from reality. L like, oh, I can have bunnies or, oh, um, they don't understand that you can't go on vacation when you have chickens or someone has to care for them. Luckily in Somerville, we have a, a chicken concierge, so if you're <laughs> going on vacation, that's okay. But other things like um, you may have chickens that lay eggs for five years, but they can live for 10. So you need to think that out because are you going to kill it? Are you, and there are things to do. And someone just went, oh, and that's exactly what I mean. I mean, the, the, um, having these 
animals is really for their production. And so you need to think about your relationship to them as pets and what they're producing. So we try to get people to think about that before you do it. And then there are the, the requirements, be it where the setbacks are, how big your signs can be, how many chickens, how many times you have to clean the coops. And these are all complaint driven. So if nobody complains, you're fine. But if someone does complain and you're not following the rules, then you could lose the license to have these. And then little things like here I have the different types of, of animals that are frequently honeybees are always blamed for. Their actions, so hornets, yellow jackets, everybody says I hate bees, but in fact it's really not honeybees that they hate. So we tried to really uh, simplify it and we also tried to um, bring people together and create points of community and knowledge sharing. So that same year we started a program that's funded out of the mayor's office called uh, the Urban Agriculture Ambassador Program, and it's modeled after the Boston Master Urban Gardener Program. So essentially people will be, um, are trained. We hired a local um, urban farm company called Green City Growers who trains these folks. There's 20 of them. And in exchange, they give 30 hours of volunteer community uh, service. So similar to other programs that exist. But the idea is that you spread the knowledge forward and that you share that knowledge. So since the, um, since the ordinance, and, I, and we have a discrepancy because my thing says only eight minutes have elapsed. So I'm looking at Gabrielle because I know she's gonna put up her 10 minute. But um, since, the, since that, uh, in 2013, we applied for a Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources grant. Oh, well, let me back up a little bit. So Groundwork Somerville, which is one of our community partners who many of you may know, they do a lot of great work in Somerville. They have a green team, which is a community employment uh, program. They had gotten permission to use this lot uh, for an urban farm. So you can see, this is kind of a nasty lot. If you live in the area and you're kind of behind past uh, Union, past Inman and behind Union. This is that uh, nasty uh, car salvage yard. And so they had a farm raising and in one day were able to uh, put up uh, 12 different gardening beds, fill them with clean soil, get things growing. Then they said, oh, the, the director called me and said, we don't have a water source. And I said, well, that was a kind of not a smart thing to overlook. <laughs> But it actually ended up being a good thing because what happened was that they got some funding together and got some rain barrels donated by the DPW. And again, the mayor's office, Honeywell Corporation, was able to give a donation and they created this rainwater catchment system which harnesses 500 gallons of rainwater. Now, those are imperfect systems, obviously, because when you most need them during the summer, there's no rain. But it was something that made the kids learn about it and a way to solve this problem when otherwise we didn't have the infrastructure or the money to pay for a water connection. Um, and that, this is the opening of the farm. The, the rainwater catchment system has a pump that you, uh, a, a bicycle that you ride to pump it. And then uh, the MIT Mad Media Lab partnered with the green team and they did this data mural so it tells you how much food is being grown and the square footage of, of what they're growing. And then in 2014 we applied for another, we, so in 2013 we applied for a grant from MDAR. So the, first we had this tiny little lot, we got the mayor out there, he was very jazzed, look we did this. We got some money to build the um, rainwater catchment system, and then we applied for a grant for $38,000. And the con conceptual thing we were trying to build was called an urban agriculture distribution and um, production and distribution triangle. And quickly, it, we have a mobile market that serves, uh, the mission is to bring fresh produce to low to moderate income families. And we were growing these two farms. One is this South Street Farm Number Two, which was a vacant lot you can see on top. It was where people, where the DPW stored old granite and um, where they stored the snow. So we got that cleaned up, and uh, part of the funds from the MDAR grant were used to create the South Street Farm. So. Um, this was the first year, they, they uh, started a little bit late because the grants are, don't really take account into the agricultural cycle, so yeah. So this year we're really hoping to, to get it going. Uh, this, they painted a mural, this is what it looked like in the winter, and if you know this area, it was a really horrible area, so uh, from a blighted area we kind of did these, what I like to call 
there's a, a planning movement called tactical urbanism where you try these lighter, quicker, cheaper things. I like to call this tactical agriculture because you're essentially taking a parking lot and putting beds on top of them. The second part of it was the uh, hydroponics farm that we uh, bought these, we bought these um, units and they're essentially the green team and one of the alternative high schools is learning how to grow hydroponically in one of the schools. And that both those, the crops from the South Street Farm and the hydroponics farm will be sold in the mobile market. And I say will be because they've done this for a year, but if you've ever tried to establish a farm and establish a farm or grow plants on a school cycle, it takes a little bit of time to iron out the kink. So they're doing that now. Um, then we got another grant in 2014 for uh, more uh, distribution network, and this one was for buying the van for the mobile market because we were uh, kind of borrowing one, and then a number of bicycles that will are satellites to the mobile market. So the mobile market stops, and then the green team can actually deliver produce that way. And part of that is also trying to partner with restaurants and get kind of orders for these farms that will uh, do that. Um, I'm going to zoom through these because I'm already out of time, but uh, I just want to highlight a couple of the things. And again, this isn't only because of the ordinance. These things were already existing in our community. Um, but for example, there's a group called the League of Urban Canners. I don't know how many of you know about them, but... <laughs> Helen knows about them. Um, they're one of the best ideas, in my opinion, in the last 10 years. And what they do, essentially, because we had a lot of folks that had a lot of fruit trees, and if you know anything about fruit trees, you have to actually take care of them or they're kind of uh, susceptible to pests. The League of Urban Canners, a lot of these folks are aging and they can't really take care of them, and so they want to cut them down. And the League of Urban Canners will go and harvest their food for them as well as prune and help with the maintenance, and then they create... Um, they make jellies and jams, which they don't sell and they can't sell because of state law. But, but the point being that you're taking a, a productive landscape, uh, harvesting what's there, giving some back to the owners, and then actually eating the rest. So in my mind, it's the best idea I've heard in 10 years. Um, they had a feature about us called Coops de Ville, about the chicken coops. Uh, and um, we have a demonstration garden outside the city hall. It's 32 square feet. It's pretty small, but we actually get a lot of food out of it, and a lot meaning city hall employees are often taking things for lunch. And um, and it's a great demonstration garden. So it's a big conversation starter. People come in and they're like, oh, I know what that is. I know what this is. Uh, and then there's uh, this gentleman here, Carmelo, is 92. He sells his tomatoes outside of Union Square. He comes up to City Hall every season to tell me what I'm not doing right with our tomatoes. Um, but, you know, this is really kind of uh, some of that older knowledge and trying to uh, pass that on to others. I'm almost done, I swear. Um, and uh, community things. The Green Team gave the mayor the Golden Trowel Award, which you can see on the top there. Uh, we, have, we partner with the state to do, there's a Somerville, food, uh, there's a Massachusetts Food Day, and we said, well, we can't just be one day. So we did a food week, and we continue to do that every year. And so conceptually, the idea really is that at first we started looking at a map of Somerville and, and thinking, what, where are the city sites that could possibly become agriculture? But then where are the community gardens? Where are these kind of larger sites? And some of those have already been implemented. But then the other idea is where are people growing food locally in their backyard that uh, can, can, people could go and buy, you could shop differently. And the idea is that maybe we're never going to have large farms. I'm pretty sure, time out, pretty sure that we're not gonna have large farms, but we can have a network. And so maybe urban agriculture needs to be thought of more as a network and maybe it's temporary plots of land that get changed out, but um, that we're producing food. Uh, and this is our, we, we had, this is um, Somerville Gothic. These are two of, of my coworkers. Um, we have on the website, you can find the ABC guide. I have a copy here. We have a Facebook group called Somerville Loves Urban Gardening where people ask questions. What do you know what this bug is? How can I get this to grow or tell about events? Uh, and then there's an urban ag Tumblr uh, and um, a blog that I write, which is on Tumblr, Somerville Urban Ag, I'm always looking for people to guest blog because I simply run out of things to say. So again, the big things are creating the ability to, the municipal laws to have it, creating education and creating a, a knowledge share, uh, facilitating that. So that's kind of been our strategy for urban agriculture in Somerville. <laughs>